Your partner is friends with their ex and it's bugging you. <laughs> Can they even really just be friends? Is it okay to feel jealous? What should you do? Today, I'm going to go deep and answer all your questions in this special segment of, yes, you guessed it, it's an Ask Dr. Abby episode, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello, hello. Oh, I haven't been here in a bit. I know, I know you, you know, been listening every week. Of course, because you're so devoted to me and I am to you, but I do tend to, you know, I record the podcasts uh, in advance so that because I just got back from vacation and it was quite fabulous. I was in the Caribbean and some friends and it was amazing. Anyway, I'm feeling very refreshed. So I did come back with a little cold, though. <laughs> Not COVID. Don't freak out. I'm good. Uh, but if I sound a little funky, um, please let it go and I'll be sipping my tea. Here I go. So I'm really excited. I got this. I actually got this question recently. I've gotten so many from you guys. So thank you. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. But I, there's just was something so like I had to answer this today. You know, I just really wanted to get it out there. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it to you like I do. And we're going to go deep. So uh, and really just talk about all the things and some of the research and really get you clear. I'm going to give it to you in a way today I think you haven't had before. So you can be super clear on uh, what's bugging you, really, and what you can do about it. All right, so, uh, dear Dr. Abby, which is so cute when you say that, just call me Abby. I've recently discovered your podcast, and I found them so, so helpful. I've been lovingly, slightly obsessively binging <laughs> episodes and already working on some of the mindfulness and calming anchor tips you provide. So first off, thank you. So thank you. Love it. So glad. Second, I have a question. Here we go. I've been in a relationship with an amazing man for almost a year now. I think we're really great together, love each other, and are planning to move in together soon. I've dated several emotionally unavailable men in the past, and this has not been the case with my current boyfriend at all. Congratulations. So overall, I'm very happy with him. Okay, here's the but. <laughs> she, she wrote it this way. She's brilliant. One of his closest friends is his ex-girlfriend of several years. He told me about her early in our relationship before I met her and asked me how I felt about it. I was honest. I don't love it, but I tried to keep an open mind. I'm not friends with any of my exes, so I continue to have a hard time understanding the friendship. She's been married for a few years now, which I thought would make me feel more secure. It doesn't. Shocker. At one point, I brought it up again after she said something that I thought was a little rude. I told him I didn't like the aggressive, like demanding way she talks to him sometimes and that I thought there need, needed to be more boundaries in place. I also thought they saw each other a little too often for my comfort, though we only talked about this briefly. He agreed with me about her aggressiveness, but kind of gave me, you know, an oh, well, that's how she is response. He has seen her a lot less often than before, though I'm sure some of that has been a natural part of dating someone new. He was visiting her every week before he and I started dating. Now we see her and her husband every few months, though they still talk and text often. I interpret a lot of her comments as passive aggressive whenever we do see her. The smallest things will make me spiral and I'll think about it and get more and more upset about it days afterwards. I've been asking myself what my best case scenario is and that it's that he understands how uncomfortable the situation makes me and just stop seeing her or they'll naturally grow apart. I don't think I can bring myself to ask him to stop being friends with her altogether, but that's what I really want. Am I a terrible person for wanting that? Of course not. Am I just controlling jealous girlfriend? I understand I have to be very clear about my boundaries with him, though I've honestly always had trouble with that. Any tips on figuring out exactly what your boundaries are and then communicating them effectively? Please help. Thank you for being amazing. And of course, I read all the good part because, you know, I like when people call me <laughs> amazing. Who doesn't? All right. So what will, I didn't come up with a name yet for this amazing, amazing. It was a, a female. So um, I'm going to call her uh, Michelle. I'm just going to call her Michelle. Michelle, my bell. All right. I wrote that down so I remember. So lots to unpack here. Lots to unpack here. Now, I do want to have full disclosure. I am, um, you know, m most of you know I've been divorced many years and now with Gary, of course, for many years. Um, but I am very friendly with my ex-husband, but we also share children together. And But I'm also really friendly and love and adore his current wife, my ex-husband's current wife. She's amazeballs. And I'm really close to Gary's ex-wife. Um, who's the mother of their kids. 
she's like incredible. I, I really have a great relationship with her. I just think she's amazing. So I think that's what, so I just want to kind of say that. And also at my wedding, there were exes at my wedding. <laughs> um, I'm not a jealous type. I'm just not. I feel like I'm kind of a catch. And if you don't think so, then move right along. It's all good. Like, that's okay. And I love you enough that I think you should move along. So I do want to say that I know I'm not the best person for that. So that's why I always go to the research and my clients and all the experience I have with this and not just talking about how I do it, uh, you know, in all the podcasts and all the episodes, because that's not really so helpful if you are a jealous person or you do have feelings about it. And having, um, well, there's a lot to unpack there too. <laughs> but having said all that, you know, I, it's also has a lot to do with how my ex and my current treat their current and ex-wives. You know, like it's all very respectful and loving, you know, and I guess I should talk about more with this situation. You know, Gary and Chris, his ex, um, they talk a lot because they also, um, one of my stepsons is severely autistic and there's a lot that goes on with his care and both of my stepsons are in their 20s and, you know, they're older, but uh, there's a lot going on. We're all going to New York in May for my one stepson's graduation from his, for his MSW program, which is very exciting, you know, but we'll all be together and doing all that. And, uh, I spend more time with Chris than Gary does, that's for sure. But, you know, they have to talk a lot about stuff with, um, our, the, uh, my autistic stepson, Justin, you know, there's just a lot that goes on. So, I think the situations are always different when there's kids involved. So that's, I guess, my long-winded way of saying that. And there don't, I'm not hearing that there's kids involved here. So I am going to talk from that perspective for a little bit, but I'll throw in the kid thing later. Um, because I think no matter what, when there's kids involved, you've got to figure something out. But, but actually, we're going to talk about that when I talk about the research. How do you like that? So let's start where we need to start, which is that there's actually been some excellent research on whether you can be friends with an ex. <laughs> Isn't that great? I think that's awesome. It, it's not, I love that we have these questions that we think are just, you know, us worried, you know, what, what does it mean? And really there's been scholars looking into this stuff. So love that. And the, and I'll link to the research on the show notes page. So, you know, you can always come to the website, abbymetcalf.com forward slash podcast, and you can, or go to the I usually, usually have a corresponding blog post, but go to the show notes page when it's an Ask Dr. Abby, you know, the, the, meaning the podcast page. And if you want to see the research, you can go look at it there. So there's four things that have been identified from the research um, that showing that friendships can be success. Well, really showing why people are friends, the motivators for why people are friends after a breakup, after a romantic relationship breaks up. And I want to talk about those because three of those are great and one is not. And, you know, three of those meaning when you, when one of those is the motivator for why you're still in this friendship with your ex, then it usually has a good result, meaning like a high quality friendship on the other side. But when you're, there's one that's here that's not uh, predictive of a good quality friendship on the other side and actually has negative outcomes. So let's talk about these motivators because as Michelle is listening, hi, Michelle, and everyone else who has somebody with an ex. I, and I thought about it with my feelings, you know, about ex-girlfriends and stuff um, and wives. Uh, y this is the first thing I want Michelle to do is think about this and maybe even ask her current boyfriend. We have to name him something, don't we? Let's name him Paul. Because Paul didn't Paul McCartney write the song, Michelle? Or was that John Lennon? We're going to say it's Paul McCartney. Because my daughter's name McCartney and you know I love Paul. Okay. So for ease of, of us just speaking nicely today. So here's Michelle. She wrote me this. Her boyfriend's name is Paul. Um, and he's got this ex-girlfriend that he's close to. All right. We might name her too before it's all over. All right. So one of the things that Michelle might do is speak to Paul and ask him like, hey, you know, I heard this on the podcast and I'm just curious where you think, you know, the reason is which of these four things I'm about to mention, where you think the the motivator is for you staying friends with your ex. I think we should call the ex, um, well, why don't we just say Oko? <laughs> Since we're doing a Beatles thing. <laughs> I like Oko. So Yoko. Yoko Ono. Sorry, Yoko. Not Oko. Let's call her Yoko. All right. 
I like Yoko. So I got I got no no beef with Yoko. But we'll we'll call her. And that's why it's a good name. So we'll call her Yoko. All right. So <laughs> we've got four motivators. Number one is civil. They they call this in the research civility, and this is when you're being kind of civil with the, your ex. In other words, the reason you're motivated to be friends with them is that you don't really hurt their feelings a lot. You feel in some way like staying in a friendly relationship with them, in a friendship with them, will help ease their hurt and their upset, ups, any upset. So uh, civility is a reason that people stay friends with exes. And depending again, so that could be in a situation where especially maybe you have an ex with that you have children with uh that could be a good reason you know this is somebody that you just you know you don't want to get in the business of hurting it just doesn't feel good so um you know kind of keeping this friendship going this or friendly to me that's more friendly than friendship but anyway um is the reason all right the second motivator is practicality and i think this one comes up a lot and this is when, you know, it's just practical to stay friends. Maybe you met at work and you've got a bunch of, you know, and it, you got to work with this person all the time. Maybe you met through school and you still have classes with this person. Maybe they're in your friendship group. Maybe that is how you started as friends. And then you got together and now you've got this big friendship group and you're not trying to cause drama at work or in your friendship group or at school. So being friends with them really just kind of works. You know, it's just, it's again, more practical. Um, I had a client not long ago whose their families were very intertwined. And so, you know, when you're going to see the, your ex at all, every single family, you know, thing for the next hundred years, you're going to see them over and over. So you want to stay really friendly and so that the, you know, the, the families feel good about staying friends and th what they're doing. So they're less uncomfortable. And so that would also be a little bit of civility, right? Trying to help them, uh, trying to be civil with everybody and also some practicality there. So obviously some of these motivators might go together. The third motivator is security. Okay. And this is a really important one. So this is when you're thinking, well, this is someone I really trust. This is someone who I, who was my confidant for many years, who I feel is a support for me when I, you know, I've had issues. They've been so supportive. This is someone I really trust. And so I have this friendship with them. Um, from a security standpoint, there's someone I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose this relationship I have and this way that um, I feel like I can talk things through, like they really know me. Again, like I trust them in this in this way. Uh, again, depending on the kind of relationship you had as a couple or maybe even that you were, or again, friends first and then went to being a couple and now you're sort of going back to friendship and you just don't want to lose it. So, and this has been shown from the research to be the most predictive of positive outcomes, meaning when people are motivated to stay friends with an ex because of security, because of this reason, they have the the best kind of high quality friendships. That seems to be a really solid, good friendship. Okay. And then, and then we get to number four, which is a motivator that I think everyone thinks Everybody has. I, I bet Michelle thinks this is the issue with Paul and that's why she's jealous and upset. But it's often not. I need to say that. It's really not the reason a lot. But it is a neg this, this does show negative outcomes when this is the motivator. And it's you've probably guessed it. It is when you have one of the partners has unresolved romantic feelings. So, you know, in my day, we called this dick in a box. You know, we, <laughs> it's like you kept your, your ex on a little string just in case you had an emergency later and you decided, you know, you changed your mind, you know, you were out there dating and, you know, you thought the grass was greener and it's not, uh, and you want to keep this person around. So you sort of keep this friendship and this little way that you stay in their lives. So that, as you might imagine, had pretty negative outcomes for a friendship on the other side. These were not good friendships. They were very one-sided. You know, they there was a lot of problem in these kind of friendships. So th to me, this is one of the first things that I'd want Michelle to stop and really think about. Why does she think that Paul is still f f friends with his ex? 
My guess is it might be security. That's what it kind of sounds like. It sounds like there's a lot of security he gets from this relationship, but I don't know. You know, I, there's a lot more I'm sure she could say or talk about. And I, so I'm not, I'm not sure, but I don't, she didn't mention that they work together or they have all these friends together. So it felt like security. It felt like this is somebody he was in a many years relationship with. This is somebody he doesn't want to lose. I don't know if Paul has a lot of friends. He might not have, you know, men sometimes don't make a lot of friends, you know? Well, women don't sometimes either, but I think men, especially sons, have trouble with this. So I could see if maybe he just doesn't have many people in his life. And this is, again, someone, and if anything, her getting married might make him really feel at ease because he really doesn't have any (laughs) romantic feelings for her. So, you know, the friendship now feels really good because, oh, good, she's got someone else. I don't have to worry about that. And that would be something I would ask Michelle to even think about, that that's, you know, such a great thing to have, you know, when you're sure, oh, gosh, yeah, they're over there. Now, I don't know how Paul and his ex broke up. I don't know who broke up with who. I don't know if Paul was, you know, crying in his milk every day for a year. I don't, you know, I don't know how he talks about that relationship because that can also be the reasons that Michelle is feeling um, uh, jealous and worried. Um, You know, we're jealous because we feel threatened. We feel threatened by this person. And I don't know that Michelle is really any kind of threat. I'm not getting that. Um, And I'm hearing that she's got this great relationship with Paul in like every way except this ex. So I, I think it's something else. And I don't think this is about Paul, frankly. I think this is about Michelle. I say with love, Michelle, because I'm glad you wrote in. Um, and I would say this to most of you listening, that when you're jealous of an ex, you know, of a current partner having an ex friend that, who's a friend, I just mostly think that's a bunch of crap. And I don't like it. How do you like that? I just went right out there and said it. Yeah. Don't write me hate mail. I don't want it. I don't want your emails with your anger. I want you to hopefully just, this is, you know, another point of view. That's why you're listening. So I assume that I am going to like my husband's exes. I have always assumed, or a boyfriend, you know, whoever you got, right? I have always assumed actually that I would like their exes because I'm going to assume Like, if I think my man is amazing, I'm going to assume he's already picked amazing women before me, right? And by the way, that is true with my men in my life. They have picked incredible women. I will tell you at my um, wedding to my ex-husband, he had an ex-girlfriend there he was with for a long time who I loved. She has since passed on, very sadly. But my, she made a wedding album for us. Like, she took all these incredible pictures that day and she put them together in the album. I mean, she was just an amazing woman and you know they broke up because they broke up they they fell out of love they came to a juncture where it wasn't working anymore but there was a really I I really respected that he liked such a cool woman like when I met her I thought she is badass (laughs) my if anything my estimation of my ex-husband it went up that he could attract and get and be with this really cool woman and I put myself in that category I'm very different but you know, than her. I look different than her. I acted different than her. We had different kinds of jobs and all that. But I got it. I could look and go, yeah, it's really cool. So I assumed I would like her. And I was really happy she was at my wedding. And as were some other exes, like I said, because they're really good people and they were very supportive of our relationship. So there was no reason for me to think anything else. Now, again, I have always also treated people when I meet them with love and openness and all the good things. Now, and I feel like that's what I've gotten. Now, I'm not saying I've loved every ex that my partners have ever had. I haven't. There's been some along the way that I've met. I'm like, yick, (laughs) ick. And that might be the case right here with Michelle and this ex who she thinks is rude and aggressive and these other things and is passive aggressive with her. You know, that's something different. You don't have to like the person. You don't. But Uh, so you might not, but I do wonder, Michelle, if you are just wanting to not like her because of the way you see her treat your man. And if your man puts up with that and that's okay with him, that's between the two of them. To me, that's really not up to you to tell him that he shouldn't let this person treat him this way. That's on him. That is something if he likes that, that's what he likes. And I would say this is true anywhere in our lives. You know, if you don't like how you're 
if your ex is complaining about, if your husband or boyfriend is complaining about their boss treating them like crap, you know, your job isn't to get in there and be like, well, he can't treat you like that. What are you doing? You need to stand up for yourself. You need to do this. Remember, I always tell you, don't sack. Don't offer suggestions, give advice, or criticize. So instead, you want to ask questions, which is really what I would ask Michelle to do here with Paul. If she sees the ex treating him what she thinks is poorly, she might ask, like, how do you take it when, when you know, uh, Yoko does that stuff? Like, when she talks that way, how, how does that make you feel? You know, I know for me it's hard, but is it hard for you? Is it, you know, and if, he's, and if he says, well, yeah, it's just kind of how she is, then you do want to ask, well, so is there anything stopping you from drawing that boundary? You know, you guys have a friendship. You have a long relationship. What do you think stops you from drawing a boundary with her? Ask collaborative questions. Ask, ask, ask. And really, truly be curious. Don't think that you know the answer or that you have the right one or the right way to do it. You know, this isn't, that's not what you're doing here. You really do want to be curious. In the same way that Michelle might be curious and ask Paul, you know, um, you know, tell me more about this relationship with Yoko. I, you know, you know, I've been struggling with it and I don't want to struggle with it. So I, I want to ask more questions because I feel like I didn't ask many in the beginning and then I got kind of self-conscious about it. So I just want to, you know, ask questions. And the questions are not about, you know, what do you guys talk about? And I don't understand why you have her instead of me. And, you know, that's not it. The questions are, so tell me what you get out of this friendship. What, and, you know, and because I'd be looking for the motivation why is he motivated to be friends with her? What does this mean to him? And that's really all you got to have. Now, it's possible that Michelle, you know, does still have feelings for Paul. Not Michelle, sorry, Yoko. That the ex, the ex-girlfriend does still have feelings. And maybe that's why she's a little passive aggressive. Maybe that's why she's a little rude even to Michelle. I don't know. It's possible. But that would not be really where I had much energy I would really be focused on my man and what he was getting from this relationship. How does it make him feel? And and I would be, uh, one of the things I always ask, you know, one of the ways you kind of tell if something's an emotional affair or not is uh, asking, is there anything that you say to her that you wouldn't say to me or that you would be, uh, not that you wouldn't say to me, sorry, I should say this better. Is there anything that you talk about with her? So, I would, so Michelle, I would say to ask Paul, is there anything you talk about with Yoko that if, you, if I knew about it, you'd be really worried or upset or embarrassed or ashamed? Is there any conversations you have like that? Because one of the things I would say is that, you know, if he's getting his emotional needs met with his ex and not with Michelle, then that would have an issue with me. But from what Michelle says, that this is a great relationship, he's emotionally available, it's really going well, I don't think that's what's happening. So again, what is it about this ex that has, Michelle, has you so worried? You know, it doesn't, I, oh, what do I always say about jealousy? Focus on what you're getting in your relationship. If you're getting what you need, then that's it. Then whether they have 40 other friends or no other friends or 10 women they speak to or 10 men or whatever, if you're getting what you need, it's the same thing I say when people are really worried that their partner is drinking. You know, maybe I think my partner's an alcoholic and I think they're drinking and I'm trying to catch them drinking. And I always say to them, like, why? Are you getting what you need? If you're not getting what you need, if your partner is standoffish or if they're rude or if their personality changes when they drink and you can tell or if they are cheating on you when they drink or whatever, like, then, okay, the drinking, then it's neat. Not, Again, you can focus on the drinking all you want, but focus on the behavior. It's the behavior always that they're treating, how they're treating you, not whether they're talking to their ex-girlfriend, not whether they're drinking, not whether they're, you know, liking someone's stuff on Instagram or whatever. It's what are you getting? The more you focus on these other people or other things that are outside of the relationship, the more lost you're going to get. Because what can't you control? Jermall? You cannot control other people. You you can't. You got to let go of that. What you can control and where the focus does need to be is on yourself. On yourself. 
out. And here's the thing I'm going to say to Michelle and everybody listening right now that you're probably not going to like, but I'm going to say it because I love you. I really love you and you got to hear this. Outside circumstances do not make you unhappy. I'm going to say it again. Outside things do not make you happy or unhappy. That is an inside job. You have to make you happy. You, whenever we look to someone else and we think, if they would just do this, if, 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 if Paul would just break up with Yoko, then I would be happy. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> it's going to be something else. Because this is something else. That is not an outside thing that's going to make you happy. What you want to do instead is, what do I need to do to be happy? What is it that I need to do? Not what somebody else needs to do. What do I need to do to be happy? And again, it's just like taking a drink. You know, in a moment, if I'm really stressed about work and I have some, you know, drinks to forget about it for a while, that's great. The drinks will definitely work in the short term. But guess what? As soon as I sober up, I'm going to still be worried about work. And if anything, maybe if I blew off work because I was drinking, I'll be more worried about work. It's kind of the same thing here. If I, my guess, and this is just my spidey senses and I could be wrong, but my guess is that Michelle is focusing on the ex because things are good with her current. She, she said early in the, in her little email to me that, you know, in the past she hasn't done great with men. She's dated several emotionally unavailable men in the past, but it's not with her current boyfriend. So I think she's looking for things that are wrong. Like there must be something wrong with him. There's got to be because otherwise I can't have all these wonderful things, even though I've done the work and done all this. Michelle, of course you can have wonderful things. Of course you can have a devoted boyfriend. So that's there. And I think you're kind of self-sabotaging. I do. I think you're focused on something that you don't need to focus on at all because what you're saying is I get everything but this one thing. Why is this a but? Who cares? If... I mean, I know you care. I say that with love. But you get what I'm, where I'm going here. If it, and this would be to me anything in a relationship that you're focused on the one thing. Now, obviously, if, if Paul was cheating, was having sex with different women every day, and that was the only thing wrong in the relationship, and you didn't like that, I would probably, you know, I'd say, well, that one thing kind of outweighs all the good things, huh? But I would ask you right now, Michelle, does this outweigh all the good things, really? This relationship with Yoko? Does this friendship where they text and they talk and you see them every few months? It what is it really that has your knickers in a twist about it? And th so that's what you need to ask yourself. What so you're gonna ask kind of what is their friendship based on? Again, was it a mutual breakup? What, you know, what's flying around about there with you? Uh but for you, where is your jealousy coming from? You need to figure that out. Do you, do you trust him? Are you trusting Paul? Do you not trust him? Is this a pattern of insecurity for you? Is this something that you've done before? Are you, again, sabotaging a good thing? These are the things I think most of the work has to be internal, which I think you get too, because that's why you um, wrote in. You're a catch, clearly. I love how you wrote. You were so smart and funny. And I think you're probably adorable is my guess if I looked at you. Um, you're a catch. You got to believe you're a catch. So this other woman is no threat to you whatsoever. And the more you act in that way, the more of a catch you'll be. I always say it's a, it's a program of attraction, not promotion. You know, it's a program where, you know, relationships, we say that in the 12 steps, sorry, program of attraction, not promotion, you know, but in your life, it, with your relationships, as we shine bright, you know, people are just drawn to us. They're drawn to our energy. They're drawn to our positivity. And this woman doesn't stand a chance in the face of Michelle in full inner being line alignment in the in the form of I am a badass and I know it and I am really a catch and you're lucky to have me and I'm lucky to have you but you're lucky to have me and being in that space that energy is incredible it is he Paul will just be a moth to the flame I don't know what else to say like who doesn't want to be near that and again you know if you think Paul is getting something it is a question you could ask Paul as another to do uh what is he getting from the friendship like what does he get again I think it's security but is it like a security blanket is he afraid to make other friends is this person substituting other friendships uh is he afraid to let go of something this one person he thinks understands him like no one else like you know what is it but again be curious and not threatened this woman is not a threat 
So if you're really, truly curious and want to help people figure out their, be their best selves and ask these kinds of questions, then that's where the gold is. Remember what I always, 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 always say, are you coming from love or fear? And if you're coming from love, that's number one, right? That's the first thing you notice. You're coming from curiosity, openness, compassion. You love your partner. You want them to have lots of great friends. You want them to have lots of support. Are they coming from love or fear is really only your secondary one just to note. You can't change it, but you can look at it. And so if you, if Michelle thinks that Paul is really coming from fear, he's, um, you know, fear be being, I really had the best thing ever and I blew it. That's obviously a huge problem. Although I would find it hard to believe they'd have such a good relationship current, he, you know, currently Michelle and Paul, if that, if Paul was still pining for Yoko. But having said that, you know, is he coming from maybe the security blanket thing? He's afraid to let go of the friendship because he doesn't think he could have any others or other people to understand him. Is he afraid of getting more intimate with Michelle, of getting closer to Michelle and really deepening that relationship? Because maybe he's scared too and it feels so good to him too and he's worried about ruining it. Maybe he doesn't want Michelle to see his crazy, right? To see his freak. We all have a freak. Where's his freak? Maybe he's trying to hide that and he's sharing the freak with, with Yoko because he loves Michelle so much and doesn't want to lose her. We don't know. But these, this is why we ask questions. And, you know, I also want to remind people, this is hard because we've, it's pretty new, this whole phenomena of having male-female friendships. This is a new thing with the advent of, you know, with male-female friendships with an ex, sorry, with a, with, um, well, male-female friendships at all, but certainly with an ex-partner. Because really in the history, you know, it's really, again, since women entered the workforce, we start, you know, being in school and higher education and, you know, we're in more places. So there's more opportunity to have male friends and to be friends with an ex, again, where things would, you'd keep seeing them, right? You didn't just like <laughs> be on the farm on the prairie and then, you know, your ex-husband died or your ex-husband, you know, whatever, you separated somehow and then you moved to another prairie. You never had to see that person again. There was, you know, there was, <laughs> there was no uh, social media or anything else. You got to just say goodbye. So it's a really kind of newer phenomenon. It's definitely something I'm seeing in the LGBTQ community much more commonly. And I think that, you know, being friends with an ex, and I think that's frankly, just because those communities are smaller. And I actually think the research would bear me out on that. Um, those communities are smaller. There's less, you know, you kind of have to be friends sometimes for the sake of what I talked about before, the um, practicality in a lot of ways. You know, there's just aren't that many. And, th and now your ex might be dating another friend of yours. And, you know, so you really have to figure out a way to all get along. So that happens, I think, much more commonly in kind of a smaller community. So, uh, but it's relatively new to heterosexual folks now. So it's something to just give yourself a little break about as you're trying to figure it out, as you're having your biology, you know, our brains kind of take over and see threats everywhere and, you know, all the things that we haven't had to deal with before. So I do want Michelle to just sort of give herself a little break, right? But the real goal right now is to, is to focus on the positive, focus on what's working and ask questions. Ask collaborative, loving, yummy, wonderful questions. And I actually will have the, I have a list of collaborative questions if you haven't gotten it yet. And I will link to that in the show notes for you. So go to the website, abbymetcalf.com forward slash podcast or, and you can find it there. It's not going to be, you know, where you're downloading on Spotify or somewhere, but you can come on over and check it out. And while you're there, you could support me by buy yourself a little mug or something. Go to the merchandise page. Go check out. We have t-shirts and mugs and bags and notebooks and all kinds of fun, cool things. Uh, you could also support me by leaving a review. If you like the podcast, it would really help tremendously if you could leave a review on Apple or um, uh, you could rate it in Spotify. If you listen on Spotify, you just rate, do a rating. It always helps people find me. And the more ratings and uh, reviews we have, the better the podcast does overall. And you know I'm trying for world peace. So do your part. You know, we're in a relationship. If you've been listening, please, please, you know, um, I'm just going to ask. We're in a relationship. Give back. Give me some love. Show me some love in whatever way you can. Um, 
And as always, if you just feel, I don't know, if you're a hermit living alone and you just can't leave the apartment and you can't get on the internet any other way and you can't do anything, you can still listen. I still love you. So no worries. That's it for today. I think we covered a lot. I'm kind of excited about this question. So thank you, Michelle. Names have been changed to protect the innocent. And if you have a question for me, you can email me at abby at abbymedcalf.com. You can also uh, find me on the Let's Connect page on the website. And I do, oh, I just adore you. I adore you. This stuff's hard. I'm here. I understand. It's hard. So no matter what else, do not beat up on yourself if you're having trouble, if you're hearing my words and going, oh, Abby, I just can't. Yes, you can, number one. It might take a little bit, but you can. And number two, think about how I would talk to you about it. I would not tell you you're a piece of crap and what's wrong with you and why can't you figure that out. I'd be saying, I love you. You can do this. Take baby steps if you need to, but you know, keep listening, keep in there and keep trying. All right. Have an amazing, amazing week and I will talk to you so soon.